All right, the Pains fans. Now, this is kind of maybe not so much an episode review, but kind of my open thoughts about episodes 13, 14, and 15 on this past um, Saturday. I realized that, oh man, I actually fell behind on the show. I'm actually several episodes behind. So I sat down and watched the episodes. But to be honest, I do recall telling myself that I wanted to watch the episodes regarding the bag of money. You know, I wanted to see how that would resolve. So I wanted to sit back and watch all those episodes at once because I thought it was going to be something more than two episodes. But, uh, you know, that some of my more recent pain videos, I was actually praising the show because it was doing so well. Um, you know, uh, what was it? Nyla confronting Travis, I believe his name was. Was it Travis? I think it was the name Travis for, you know, putting the uh, mouse in Lynn's room and um, seeing her and her get, kids get closer. The laugh track not being as overused in the episode everybody on screen having a purpose and not so many drawn out scenes because you know two people just making faces at each other or repeating the same lines but then we get to episode 13 and uh i think it was called a painful dispute and well i think we could sum up the episode what the first five minutes was literally ryan and joanne going back and forth about you know don't ask me to borrow no money don't ask me to lend your friends no money And just stuff like that. And literally, all it would have taken was Ryan saying that, hey, we found um, Uncle and Robert. I mean, that's probably his name. I don't know. They call like seven different names. Even I forget which one is uh, the right name. So the first five minutes could have been taken care of within 10 seconds or less if Ryan would have came in there, saw his mom, and said, hey, hey, the money, they found it, laundromat, Ella took it. That's all it would have taken. Then for like the next seven to eight minutes, we have Ella running around her room trying to hide a receipt. I will admit it was hilarious that every time she would like open a drawer or move a pillow or something like that, she would find a little uh, snack stash by Curtis, which I find pretty interesting that he would hide stuff all over the room instead of just one place. But hey, that's pretty interesting. I mean, I did laugh at that the first couple times, but the fact that that scene, the thing about the pains that really gets me is that they have good jokes, but they just stretch them out too long. I mean, it's like beating a dead horse or a uh, Batman, the killing joke, if you will. My mom has a tendency of doing this too. It's like, you know, she might say one funny phrase or whatever, but then she'll say it like five times within the same three sentences. And like, ma, no, come on. No, 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 no. That's how I felt watching the scene with her and the receipt. Like it was funny. The first couple of hiding places but then when you stretch it out for like almost 10 minutes long it's like okay let's kind of move on to the next thing then curtis comes in the room then he leaves he saw where she put the receipt then she changes it up then we get joanne coming into the house and then they have their back and forth and next thing you know we're going to sue then we get to episode 14 and that's all about the whole situation i know i said i wasn't going to review it but i feel like tyler perry does at least two to three bullet points per episode and it's like okay Here's the A, B, and maybe the C plot of the episode, and we're going to make it last 22 minutes. Then we get to the next episode. I mean, again, the first six to seven minutes was Ella and Curtis trying to avoid the uh, subpoena from the guy at the front door. Then next up, we have Nyla and Joanne talking at the church. I actually did like this scene because Nyla was the audience. She literally said what I and a lot of other fans were thinking, that... Joanne, I get that you're upset, but number one, you sold them the house at laundromat. Look at the condition you sold it in. Then you're trying to sue for the money, which doesn't make sense because it was never stated in the will that that was your money. Plus, when he bought the laundromat, that means he bought everything that came with it. Because if some random person would have bought the laundromat and found the money, number one, you wouldn't have heard of the money to begin with. So what would you do? And aside from talking about the condition of the house and whatnot that Joanne uh, sold them, I mean, literally, even if you took it to court, it wouldn't make a difference because after all, I'm pretty sure Curtis has like the license and the deeds to the house and the laundromat. All you had to do was say that when, hey, the judge would have just said, hey, you know what? You sold them everything. That means everything that came into the house and the laundromat 
That's Curtis's. And it's kind of funny because now that I think about it, it reminds me of the fact that Candace bought Benny a house and a tow company. And, you know, in this case, it was Curtis buying a house and a laundromat. Of course, the conditions of the house and laundromat were far worse <laughs> than the one of the uh, house is and the tow company. But I, I feel like what later on in the episode, Nyla wants to mediate and um, Ella reads the Bible and then thinks that half the money should go to, you know, Joanne and then they keep half themselves. I mean, I get it. That was a happy resolution, but I don't agree with it personally. I mean, let's say if I was in Joanne's shoes, I would be upset myself. But then again, that's egg on my face for not thoroughly checking the laundromat over and whatnot. Um, because, well, she kind of deserved what she got because all she did was scam Curtis and make a quick buck. And, you know, it's funny how she said, like, Ella, you know that money? We can use that for the center at church. And I'm like, well, remember when Ella wanted to get the money back from you in, like, what, episode two or three? But... Ryan already said that all the money that Curtis paid for the house of laundromat that went to the youth center at the church, hence why they got the computers and everything. So even though Joanne wanted to use the money for a good cause, it really wasn't good at how she obtained money from Curtis in the first place. And also look at the fact that here's what I would have thought might have been a good resolution, but I feel like maybe they didn't even have to, but if they wanted to share, I feel like after paying um, Terrence for renovating the laundromat because Ella did make a good point. It's like, look, we're going to fix up the laundromat, then give jobs to the young people so they can make money that way. And I'm thinking that's a good idea. So my thing is what they said it would be between 20 to $40,000 to fix up the laundromat. And um, I'm thinking, okay, let's say what well, it's $53,000. Let's just assume, you know, let's just say let's spitball here that it costs $40,000. Even that would mean 13,000 left. That would be about $6,500 a piece. Okay, that sounds fair, but he's, I would have taken a step further. It's like, look, here's $53,000. We're going to deduct what we need to fix the laundromat because we need to fix the laundromat in order to make an income to begin with. And then also on top of that, let's just deduct the amount of money that Curtis and I put into renovating the house because the house looks great and they fix it up within what the first four to six episodes. But I'm thinking to myself, how much money did Ella and Curtis have to spend in order to fix things up? I do know Joanne and Ryan, not monet monetarily, but they did help out with the cleanup. But I'm thinking like, how much money did it take to renovate the house? So Joanne, you know, is talking about, I took care of the, uh, our uncle and whatnot. Well, hey, that's all well and good, but that doesn't mean you're entitled to any of that money. So uh, that's how I felt about those two episodes. I mean, I get it. They want to make a resolution, but even I looked at Ella some kind of way because it's just like you didn't tell Curtis and you weren't going to tell Curtis about the money. I do wholeheartedly agree that she made a good call in terms of a prediction, a prediction saying that Curtis was not going to use the money wisely. He would just blow it. He wanted to get a boat, but he should have been more focused on fixing the laundromat. But then Ella is just like, okay, not only am I um, going to take this money and not tell Curtis about it, but I want to decide that we'll give half to Joanne. And I felt kind of weird about that because, you know, I, j I mean, that's just me. I'm looking at, see, I get it because not just, I, I mean, I'm, I'm from a black family, honestly, but when it comes to money, that changes people. Like people will tell you what's on it. Money will, ch it's like they say what? Money will change those around you more than it changes the person that has the money. Though Ella did drastically change during the episodes while she found the, well, got the bag of money, went to the bank, trying to hide the receipt. Because if it wasn't for Ryan and Joanne, then Curtis probably would have never knew about the money to begin with. I mean, uh, Ella probably would have orchestrated a plan to have Curtis away from the laundromat each time Terrence and his crew went in there to fix it up. But that would have raised the question of what if Curtis went to the laundromat and everything was fixed up? He would wonder what happened. But maybe that might have changed his tune about being angry when he saw how nice the place looked and how much money it brought in. So that's how I feel about it. But um, I, I do know, like, you know, if I was in Joanne's place, I would be mad. But at the end of the day, there's nothing I can do about it because, well, I sold them the place knowing it was a raggedy piece of crap. So 
I would have no reason to be mad. So with that being said, I didn't talk much about episode 15. I'll do an episode review about that. But uh, overall, th- this technically wasn't an episode review. It was just my thoughts on the whole who should get the money. I feel like it was way too clean cut. I mean, it's kind of like I didn't like what they did with Ella's character. It's like, you know, as soon as they found the money, it was like mean green Ella. But then at the end of the dispute, it's like, oh, you know what? We're going to give her half the money. I'm like, that's a big order to fill i mean here's what i think if you're going to go this route with ellis character especially with the whole money thing and uh she keeps bringing up the fact about you you did something about telling me it's like well i think curtis was upset because ella didn't tell him about the money but then she's like well you didn't tell me about moving to florida i feel like this should be the you should cut the line there what i mean by cut the line is okay Curtis was wrong by moving Ella, like uprooting them and then going all the way to um, Florida. (laughs) Excuse me. But then you have Ella finding all this money and not telling Curtis about it because it, I mean, I feel like in the same way it's fair because uh, what Ella had good intentions because she wanted to do something nice by fixing up the laundromat because she knew Curtis wasn't going to do, do it right, which is why, you know, she wanted to fix it up so they can make a living while Curtis move them down to Florida because of the good deal, if you will, and they can retire down there. So I feel like after these episodes, don't bring it up anymore. Like don't, don't have Ella talking about, well, you did this about telling me, no, 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 you're, you're, you're even now. That's how I feel about it. So with that being said, uh, what did you think about episodes 13 and 14 from the time Joanne wanted to sue the pains? Well, Curtis and Ella to when they came to a peaceful resolution, uh, I mean, literally, I feel like Ella and Curtis needed that money more because, well, they need to fix up the laundromat. They need to replenish their accounts because we don't know how much money they put into renovating the house. Not to mention you have two kids and another person to feed that live in your house, even though that was Ella's choice, not Curtis's. So with that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, 15 episodes in the books. Do you think The Pains is a good show? Do you not like it? Do you miss the old cast? Or do you feel like another show should have got revived instead?